You gotta give it to the people of the Alps. They really have mastered building lifts to some of the most unimaginable places. This is the Aguidi Midi, and it can easily be reached by tram, which takes you up over 2,700 meters from the valley bottom. Unsurprisingly, this makes it a hotspot for skiers, climbers and mountaineers who visit from all over the world to venture into the rugged and glaciated terrain surrounding the Mont Blanc. Welcome to the French Alps, to Chamonix, the cradle of mountaineering. Today we'll go up the highest ski lift in the world and afterwards we'll ski the longest off-piste run in the world, the Valle Blanche, just next to the Mont Blanc, the highest mountain of the Alps. So lots of superlatives today. I will show you what gear you need, what skills you need if you ever want to try to do this run yourself because there are definitely some precarious situations you can get into up there. We still have a little bit of time before our bin leaves, before the gondola takes us up there. Let's grab a croissant and then have some fun up there. Yeah, it's crazy how big this thing is, like all these different levels and now we're up on the highest platform. Got the Mont Blanc behind us, definitely on the to-do list. Want some more in shape than not a fat fuck. But anyhow, it's a beautiful day up here, so it'll be a nice ski. Yeah, it's just really great to be up here. The Valle Blanche can be skied along several routes, which all have a different character and difficulty. We'll be skiing a slight variation to the classic Valle Blanche line, skiers right of the Grosse Rognon a big rock sticking out of the glacier. Skiers left of it, La Vraie Valle Blanche, Le Petit Envers and Le Grand Vert du Plan can be found, with the last one being the most technical and steepest way down into the Mer de Glace. So Tom, when people want to ski down the Valle Blanche, why do you recommend doing it with a guide? It's a big glacier with crevasses. You know, you need to be sure where you're going, have the right gear. So unless you're pretty experienced skiing on glaciers, it's definitely better to take a guide. And what kind of skill set and what kind of gear would one of your clients need to ski the Valle Blanche? Oh, just like a, a, someone who's a reasonable off-piece skier, but if conditions are good, they don't need to be a, uh, an amazing skier, just to have a background of some, some off-piste and be able to ski in different conditions. And then they need a harness, uh, crampons, avalanche gear, so shovel, transceiver probe. That's it, really. Before we can clip into our skis, we have to make our way down the Aret. A narrow pass along the ridge, which, especially in icy conditions, can be the most intimidating part of the whole adventure. Whoa, it's free. Sliding down the arret. Uh, you always need to wax your ski boots for the arret, so you can just uh, slide down it. Whoa, fuck. Don't wanna fall down this. Oh, you're fucking dead. Uh-oh, oncoming traffic. Ça va comme ça? Wee! Some people even ski this. Wee! With the initial excitement behind us, it's time to do some actual skiing. Yeah, this way is probably one of the easiest routes you can take. 
And yeah, if you're wondering why we just ski in the tracks and don't go out into the nice snow, it's because there's crevasses everywhere and I'd rather be on shitty snow than in a hole. Check out these big ass rocks. Pretty cool. I think I need a glass of red wine soon. Boop, boop. In softening snow, we make our way to the Refuge du Ricard, an excellent spot for a little lunch break. Might be easy to ski, but you can still the avalanches. This hut is also a great base for exploring more of the valley over multiple days, as it can sleep up to 57 people and even offers half board. Sure. Good little lunch break here at the refuge. Red wine, some cake. Life is good and we're not quite done yet. We still gotta make it down the Mary de Glas and then we gotta hike up 500 steps to the gondola and then we gotta take a train down to the valley. Can't ski all the way down right now because it's already late April, so there's not enough snow. But yeah, it's cool. So many different things in one day. Should get a move on or we might miss the last gondi. Then we're really fucked. So cool looking here. From the refuge we descend another 400 meters, passing through yet another ice field with more cool looking Ciroc's. Moguls. Eventually we reach the Mer de Glace, meaning Sea of Ice. Or at least what's left of it. Yeah, I don't remember it being like that. Like this stuff used to be fun. Yeah, I did a season here 10 years ago and it's totally different now. Like so much more of the glacier has melted. It was all ice. It was cool because there were these little ice gullies and you would just like play around in there and like ride it like a loose track. Not anymore. Kind of sad. Better ski the Valle Blanche soon before there's just rocks. Like next week. And you can see by the walls that this was all under ice. Oh. Hello. out the walking section is starting sooner than I was hoping for. So the alpine boots were pretty good for sliding down the arete fast but they're not so great for this shit. Uh oh first injuries. Will we gonna make it out of here alive? I doubt it. Hope the camera gear makes it out alive. Okay. Several minutes later we reach the bottom of the steps as well as the entrance to a man-made ice cave. The cave gets recut each year and can be accessed by non-skiers as well. We got a bar in here, but no booze. Uh, steps, steps, steps. Lots of steps. So yeah, when I did a season here in 2012, we would come right from here. So not from all the way down there because the snow line, the ice was actually still here. Now all the way to the bottom. Like, it still baffles me. Four stairs. After ascending 580 steps, we reach a small gondola that takes us to the Mont d'Anvers train station. 
From here, a historic Kok railway takes us back into the heart of Chamonix. Good day, thank you. Cheers. We made it back down to the bottom. Just having a drink at elevation now. A really good day, really fun. And yeah, the skiing, it's not amazing. It's nothing special, but overall it's a really cool experience. So I can highly recommend it. And I think you should do it at least once in your life. If you need a guide to take you down there, I left my buddy Tom's contact details in the description. Feel free to contact him, he's a lot of fun. If you want more Chamonix content, let me know in the comments. For like steeper stuff, I'll try to get that in at some point as well. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.